Okay, this is the wiring of the big beam flashlight. These two wires, the red and black, come from what we'll call the headlight, just like on a car. I don't think it matters what size of the bulb they go to. So you have this red one goes down to here, which this is ground. I will tip this up here. The camera can pick it up. This is ground. This goes right back to frame. This is isolated. Now, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the 6 volt lantern batteries, your positive terminal is on the outside. I'm not sure I don't have one here with me. I wish I did. I could show this thing in action. I did hook three volts up to it from a battery pack and made sure my bulb still worked. Back to the subject. These two wires are coming from the headlamp. Your red one goes to here which is grounded to the case. Now this could be positive ground like on an old six volt tractor or old things. Someone correct me if they know and I don't know. But this is isolated and it's black. So it's making me think this is a positive ground flashlight. Okay. Your black wire will run through your switch of course on the left side. And we can reach down with your thumb and turn on the flashlight. That's naturally right handed. Reach down, turn on your headlight, which we'll call the front light the headlight. You reach down with your thumb. That was pretty smart. Okay, it runs through your switch, then goes to here. So, flipping the switch on and off completes your circuit. Okay, now this is where I get confused. Here is your wire for the backlight, the tail light, we'll call it, the flasher bulb tail light. It runs through the switch, only one wire, and this wire will run, you can see that down here, let me flip this around. This is the tail light wire. This wire runs up through here, and it goes up here, and this is where I kind of got confused. Okay. It goes around here, which I say is the ground. Because if you look at this tab, make sure I stay focused here. If you look at this tab, this is touching the outside of the socket. There is a piece of insulating material, that brown fiberboard. Then I'm assuming it's riveted. I've had trouble with the flash not working because see how easy this spins? Let's spin this around here. Get that out of the way. We'll get the wire out of the way. I've had trouble with this lamp in the past because this spins so easy and I've had to play with it to get the light up. So let's get a good view in here with the camera. Stop moving and it'll focus a little better. I'm assuming this black is the ground because it goes to the outside of the bulb, which is the ground. you got to piece that brown fiber material, then you have a rivet, which I'm not going to bend this up. I'm assuming there's a rivet in there. We're going to take the bulb out and we'll look down in there. Which makes me think this is a positive brown flashlight. Okay, while we're on camera, we'll go ahead and take the bulb out of here. Okay, as I suspected. There is a small ribbon in here. This is like a gray fiber. Let's get this on camera here. If you stop on telemacro, this will self-focus. So there is a ribbon here. So the center of the bulb does go to ground. There's your ribbon. So I'm thinking this is a positive ground flashlight because there's only one wire going to the tail light and as this wire goes down here here's your tail light wire it will go through the switch too much stuff in my way it will go through the switch and down here to the center and this is isolated I think I got a good view on the camera before there that'll be better this is isolated. There's a big hole in the metal. That's insulated away from the ground. So, I believe I am correct. This is a positive ground flashlight. Don't ask me why they did that. Old tractors, old cars. For some reason, they just did it. So, there's only one wire going back to the flasher. 
But as you see, when I was spinning that back here, I've had trouble with this. Close this down on the tail light. I've had trouble with this because this will spin around. I've had to play with this. I've actually taken the wire, and it's probably why it's turned this much, and wrapped it to maybe put some tension on it. I don't want to bend anything and break it. This is like brand new inside, even if you've seen how clean the bulb was. All the flasher bulb is, which you'll never see it on this video, all the flasher bulb is, is there's a piece of metal in there. You'll never see it on here. If you could see like a little brown. All there is the flasher bulb in here is you have a for one side of it, there's a little piece of metal in there. It's probably like a tungsten or something. It touches one side of the lead for your filaments. And when that warms up, it just pulls away. When it cools down, it touches. I have tapped on this to get it to flash. I have also played with it to get it to light up. Maybe if I got this where it was just right, I could put some hot glue in there someday. Your lens goes a quarter turn. There are slots in here. Of course, your lens go a quarter turn. And then it locks on. We can do it on camera here. If you go too far, it'll just fall off. Really not the greatest design. And what's it say on here? It just says Big Beam and Crystal Lake, part number 929. And I did post that in the other video, all them parts numbers. Also, you can see the instructions I put back in here. If you could see through the clear part of the ball, this is why I took it apart when I first got this. I could see a piece of paper in there. So that's nice, those instructions. I put a few uh, pictures at the end of the video, you'll see those instructions. There's supposed to be rubber booties on here. They were rotted and gone. This is my opinion. If your hot goes down to here, and I'm thinking that on a 6 volt lantern battery, the hot is the outside. I'm trying to think my memory. I don't use stuff like this anymore. It's amazing how the paperwork is not any more stained than this. It must have never had a battery leak, just a little bit of moisture. I have sandpaper dust. Use some uh, like 220 wet dry, really fine. I would not recommend a wire brush. Wire brushes, no matter how clean it is, it might be contaminated. Take you some wet dry sandpaper and sand this. Just a small piece. Also, pencil erasers. Anybody who has copper contacts on something, if you take a, a nice clean pencil eraser and rub the crap out of it, You'd be amazed how shiny you can make copper. You can. You want to make sure it's a clean eraser. If it's dirty, well, clean it off. Wipe it on your blue jeans and get the lead off, the graphite. This is your insulating piece. This is your fiber. That, to the best of my knowledge, is how this hooks up. It's using the case to make the other connection for the taillight bulb. This, it does not matter, I don't think, on the headlight, where it goes. I did snap a picture of that. Of where it goes, either side of the bulb. To me, it doesn't matter. It's just a bulb that has a contact on either side. And it shows how to put your terminal, put that piece of paper is. If you have a screw terminal, it shows how to slide it under and tighten the screw down because they don't push on. But, if anybody knows, tell me right off, leave a comment. If the outside Springer 6 volt is positive, because this is red, it's out here, this grounds right to this metal to the cabinet. Okay, I think I made the video long enough, but hopefully that will help somebody out there. I've got a YouTuber out there that's working on one of these, and I've got one complete, so I'm always glad to help. I enjoy making little videos. So... Thanks for watching. Hope that'll help some of you out. I hope I didn't confuse anybody too much. Thanks for watching.